any blocking to be overcome and also uh, the difficulty of the challenge. So I'm starting here with sort of a qualitative uh, matrix that, I've, that uh, is still in the works. Population trends, energy trends, industrial models, advertising, all of these uh, ways in which we work within the growth and system model that have tremendous momentum and inertia. So from a systems uh, point of view, we have to understand that uh, what happens with population very much depends uh, on where it's been today, uh, how much, how the distribution is in a, in a different country among ages, um, um, and, and, and so on. Um, the complex web of investments and, 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 and stranded debt type uh, um, problems. I mean, investments are strongly tied to lock-in, whether they're intellectual investments or monetary investments. Once the investment is made, the expectation of return is there. So that creates a, a level of lock-in that you have to come up with a convincing way to overcome. So is your 401k plan uh, safe? Um, if I want to propose a different model that's not uh, dependent on you getting the return you ex expect in year 2030 based on a certain amount of growth, which is dependent on our growth uh, based system. If I want to say to you, look, you're going to be okay, things are going to be very, very different, well, I've got a, a big job ahead. How do property regimes, commodification, monetary evaluation have to change? Um, <clears throat> Tragic institutions is something I like because I worked at one for seven years in the Commission for Environmental Cooperation. These are institutions that were created to deal with some aspect of the tragedy of the commons problem, but have become tragic in and of themselves uh, because they're no longer meeting the goal for which they were created, or circumstances have changed, but they have not, they don't have the adaptive uh, ability to respond to those changes and yet they continue occupying the policy space uh, that they occupy and crowding out better options. Um, the rebound effect is another systems uh, idea that, that also we need to overcome to stay within uh, limits. Lock-in that we might want to promote, supranationality and subsidiarity, how Expandable models like, the, United, like the, the European Union, where you started with a pretty much pure trade and economic deal in the 1950s, and by today have a supranational structure that imposes on all member states uh, rules about the environment and, and, and other things, much uh, beyond what, what happens, say, in North America. Um, efforts that pave the way, well, I should have started here with some of the with what we heard last night um, from um, Ms. Mr. Richardson uh, about um, examples within, um, within some indi indigenous cover, uh, cultures and how the economy really works. Eleanor Ostrom's examples of ways that we've used parts of our ecosystem in a way that are maintained. You know, we know that some of the key features there are our identity to place. Um, strong connections to play, strong intergen intergenerational uh, caring, things that um, say with, uh, uh, you know, a London bank that's selling investment opportunities that are tied to uh, deforestation in Indonesia or other land grabbing kind of things are simply missing. Um, community, community supported agriculture, I happen to like that because I, I do that and my favorite part of every week in the summer is driving my bike along the Lachine Canal, uh, and seeing the farmer who grew my food, having a little conversation, and you know, having my mouth water about what's there. So we need to find those efforts that paid the way and look how to, uh, to, how to build them. And then I'll just leave <laughs> ideas from the degrowth movement. Well, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, when, we, when we look at this, we have to consider the, the structural features of, of legal systems. So first, we have to understand if we're going to apply this kind of a lock-in framework, how long do different types of lock-in take to deal with, how hard are they to, 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 to solve. We have to remember that the law is part of a panarchy that includes these other systems, ecological, social, political, cultural, economic. I should have included there as well technological, uh, because we have so many technological systems that would need to be reconfigured. Um, infrastructure and so on. Uh, law 
like other normative systems, is built on a, on a world uh, view um, uh, and in ethics. Um, there are, within law, uh, four main variables to work with. Law can either grant entitlements, impose obligations, allow freedoms, or uh, put constraints on those freedoms. And it's the configuration of those different things that ultimately determines the full con configuration of the law. You have to take into account all of the different actors, agents, institutions, and power structures that are built into the legal system. And all of these things, of course, um, have a certain degree of, of lock-in. And then if you're going to fully implant an idea like ecological law or a goal like a mutually enhancing human-Earth relationship, you have to consider the many arenas of law in which that can be relevant. The arenas for distributing rights, um, the arenas of economy, finance, uh, contracts and trade, for example, uh, regimes of property in the commons. And then sectorally, different, different uh, the, the law as it, as it applies to different sectors like energy, food, uh, water, and land use. So ultimately what I uh, am trying to do is, is, is to build in this idea of overcoming uh, bad lock in and instilling a good lock in with an overall adaptive uh, methodology in which you're starting with an, an initial paradigmatic or uh, framework or, or set of objectives like mutual enhancing human earth relationship. You're coming up with a set of law of, of, of indicators uh, for law and, and its related systems for whether you're there. Um, and, 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 and through an, a, a strategy that takes into account the degree of lock in both within the legal system and these other systems. Um, you are constantly getting feedback, making adaptive adjustments, and that's, uh, um, that's a constantly evolving approach. So um, uh, I have the, the misfortune of, uh, of working on my, my, uh, my studies uh, at this very broad framework uh, level. I hope I've given you uh, an overall taste, and I'm, I'm happy to discuss it, to discuss it with you uh, at the end of the session. So thanks very much.